It was 74 years ago in 1950 when Enrico Fermi was walking to grab some lunch with a few other fellow physicists discussing some UFO reports when he suddenly asked, but where is everybody? This was not a new observation, in fact, since ancient times, thinkers and scientists have looked at the sky wondering what could be out there. And as we've started to have some grasp of the nature of the universe with the help of technology during the past few centuries, we have started seeing the broader picture, which logically should include the existence of other extraterrestrial species, right? So following that, let's see a few theories about alien life and a few possible reasonable explanations of where aliens could be. We now know a lot about the universe. By today's estimates, it has taken about 13.7 billion years since the Big Bang, where everything has begun. This is an enormously long time, time in which many planets, solar systems, galaxies, galactic clusters, life have formed to create what we can now see on pictures from telescopes or whenever we look at the night sky. It's estimated roughly that there are somewhere between a few hundred billion to upwards of a couple of trillion galaxies in the observable universe. In each of those hundreds of billions to trillions of galaxies, there are roughly on average 100 billion stars with hundreds of billions to trillions of planets orbiting them. Did you get confused already? To sum it up, based on the Kepler mission and some data, models suggest that there could be up to 700 trillion planets in the observable universe. In our galaxy alone, it's in the ballpark of billions of Earth-like planets, the vast majority of which will be far older than Earth. In fact, the oldest estimated planet in our galaxy is almost 13 billion years old, three times older than our whole solar system, which is only 4.5 billion years old. Given these facts and that interstellar travel might be fairly easy to achieve given enough time, Earth should have been visited by aliens already. So where the heck are they? This question was asked by Enrico for me back in 1950. He was an Italian and American physicist who received numerous rewards and contributed a lot in both theoretical and experimental physics. Among all else, he conceptualized the idea that even though there is high probability of the existence of extraterrestrial life and Earth-like planets, we still somehow haven't been in contact with any. This was later named the Fermi Paradox. It's been discussed that the Fermi Paradox might be missing important aspects, which we could just be blind to or unable to understand and therefore the equation lacks accuracy. That's why there have been numerous hypotheses and theoretical explanations of the paradox. Maybe one of the main theories is the theory of the Great Filter. The idea behind it, as the name suggests, is that there are many barriers to evolution of intelligent life anywhere in the universe, which explains why it might be especially hard for any to develop. In general, there are four main barriers. These are habitability, which is probably the most fundamental one because it means you need an Earth-like planet and similar solar system to even have ground for any life form to develop further on. Then it comes abiogenesis, which basically means the creation of biological life from non-life and its further evolution into more complex organisms. Then those complex organisms have to have enough potential to become intelligent, which will eventually lead to some form of technological development like tools and instruments. And then lastly, those organisms have to have the urge and means for space colonization. And of course, in between these there have been proposed various other barriers or filters, like for example that a civilization has to survive self destruction at a certain moment, like a possible nuclear war. So basically the idea of the Great Filter Theory is that as a civilization lives on, the chances of it not passing through one of the filters on its way increases, therefore the lack of intelligent life in the universe. All of which is quite similar to another popular theory, the Rare Earth Hypothesis, which argues that it's extremely improbable for complex life to emerge in the first place, because it needs factors such as the right arrangement of planets around the star, the right orbital distance from the right type of star the right location in the right kind of galaxy, a continuously stable orbit, an atmosphere, one or more evolutionary triggers for complex life, which later also requires an impossible combination of astrophysical and geological events and circumstances. For example, let's say an asteroid hits the planet and kills everything, such as the one that wiped out the dinosaurs, which in fact actually helped smaller species to develop further on, and if it weren't for that event, Homo sapiens could have not become Homo sapiens at all. Or maybe even some say, if it weren't for the object that clashed into Earth in the early stages of its creation and formed what later would be the Moon, which created conditions such as rotation and axis tilt, which are preconditions for good climate, life might not have evolved at all in the first place. These are just a few examples of the whole line of events that happened to pave the way for us. 
So the theory says that maybe complex Earth-like life is just pure luck and needed a long series of unlikely events to occur. But at the end of the day, this might not be the case at all. Life could actually be very probable, it's just that the size of the universe doesn't make it easy for us or any other intelligent civilization to traverse it to say hi to its neighbors. The observable universe or the part of the universe we know exists is about 93 billion light years across. Believe it or not, more than 90% of it is situated at more than 500,000 light years away from us. What many maybe don't realize is that whenever we look at the sky, we only see the light that has already traversed this whole distance between the object we are looking at and Earth, which takes a lot of time and we are essentially looking at the past on that object. Something that has happened a long, long time ago but it reaches us only now. For example, if we take Proxima Centauri, which is only around 5 light years away from us, and we look at it through a telescope, we're essentially looking at what happened 5 years ago over there, because it has taken 5 years for light to reach us here on Earth. So, on one hand, if we were to look from the perspective of an alien civilization, for the most part, Earth and the solar system haven't even formed yet. Even if this alien civilization was within the Milky Way, they most likely would be looking at prehistoric times tens or hundreds of thousands of years ago, before Homo sapiens or anything resembling a civilization on the planet ever existed. On the other hand, and from our perspective it's essentially the same. What's more is that we have only been using radio signals for about a couple of centuries now. Even more so, the first long-range transmission technologies to emit stronger radio signals which are able to travel into space were for first time invented around the turn of the 20th century. Which means that the furthest our radio signals have ever been is only about 200 light years in diameter and just 100 light years away from our planet in any direction. But still, the Milky Way has hundreds of billions of planets planets alone, some of which are quite close to us and way older. We should have at least detected some activity or remnants of other civilization should have reached our solar system if there were any. That's why there is this hypothesis called the zoo hypothesis. It plays with the idea that extraterrestrial civilizations may be aware of Earth's existence, but choose to avoid contact intentionally to allow for human development without interference from external forces. A fundamental motivation for the zoo hypothesis is is that premature contact would unintelligently reduce the overall diversity of paths the universe itself could take. The hypothesis also looks at the time span between the emergence of the first Milky Way civilization and subsequent ones. Some simulations suggest that a civilization with a potential multi-million year head start could be in the singular position of being able to control, monitor, influence or isolate the emergence of every civilization that follows within their sphere of influence. Advancements in the sciences and technology, astrobiology and life, computing and machine learning, and the collection and analysis of all the data offer new opportunities to explore the possibility of alien life. By integrating these disciplines, there is potential to enhance the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, which includes seeking life forms unfamiliar to us. Because after all, alien life might not be carbon-based, and its biological code might not be similar to our DNA and RNA. Since the launch of the Kepler telescope and data analysis on ground-based observatories, we have detected thousands of exoplanets in small sectors of our galaxy alone, thus providing powerful evidence that our solar system is not an exception, but simply one out of countless others in the universe. However, much of astrobiology research involves searching for chemical biosignatures, which are molecules or combinations of molecules that could indicate the presence of life. But part of the difficulty in searching for life is that scientists don't agree on how life started in the first place, or what life even is. Of course, there are some agreements such as life is a chemical system capable of self-sustenance and self-reproduction, but this is rather vague of a frame in search for extraterrestrial life. Here, to pass the DNA biological instructions down the generational line, two organisms need to mix to form a new organism carrying genetical information. In that sense, scientists assume that all forms of life would need some way to pass down biological instructions. But it's possible that aliens might not make these instructions out of the same chemicals as ours, or in the same way or shape. Rather than limiting the search for extraterrestrials, we must use the most extensive exploration methods possible. It shouldn't really matter whether aliens look or think like us, or use familiar technology. It's actually likely for them to be very different from us and completely alien to our evolutionary processes. 
And in conclusion, I wanted to say that we are indeed the product of local astronomical and planetary factors. However, it would be unreasonable to suggest that similar evolutionary patterns never happened with other planets. Somewhere out there, based solely on numbers, life may have evolved to bear some resemblance to us. It might interact with its planetary environment as we do and evolve to produce biological forms with logical minds presenting similarities to us, who may be willing to communicate in ways we can understand. The fact is that we started this journey only a few decades ago and have applied to it very limited tools and detection strategies. At the end of the day, if we ever met an alien civilization and if we found a way to communicate with them, a diametrically different opinion and perspective on the universe and life will bring about fresh ideas to our society, technology and thinking we can use to become even better. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.